Okay, boys and girls, today we are out on a not so chilly, chilly winter day. And we're going to be taking a look and talking about the JBK or JB Knife Works Layman. Now, I'm going to continue to call them JBK in this video just because it's a lot shorter than JB Knife Works, but essentially it's the same. It's JB Knife Works is what I'm referring to. Now, like I said, today we are taking a look at the beautiful and the amazingly handmade JBK Layman. Now, the little JBK Layman has a lot of similarities to my BRK Bushcrafter and a lot of differences. So let's jump into it. First, I also want to note that this is a at least or at minimum semi-custom, but what I would consider pretty close to a custom knife. And when I actually talked to JBK, uh, they asked me what size or sorry, what thickness I wanted this blade in. And I did specify 532nds or 0.15, which is the thickness of the BRK Bushcraft. So I did have this made in a custom thickness. This blade comes in a wide variety of thicknesses all the way down to, I believe, 1 16th of an inch thick, which is very, very scalpel thick. But depending on what job you want to get done and what your needs are, that might actually just be what you need. So I did have this made in the same thickness as the BRK Bushcrafter because 5 30 seconds because 532nds is my preferred blade thickness. I think it is kind of the perfect thickness, not too thick, not too thin, and is capable of handling a large variety of different tasks. Now, that being said, because this does have some custom touches, this blade is tapered, so you may be able to see here, hopefully, if I can kind of hold it, you know, you can see that the 532nds is really right about right around here and then this does have a tapered tang so it tapers out and then of course it does also taper towards the tip so this blade is not actually as thick as you might initially think it does have a thick middle kind of core to it so when you are batoning when you are hard using the blade it is nice and thick right around where you need it but it does get scalpel thin at the tip for doing things like processing game animals processing natural resources uh, doing those types of wilderness activities. In addition, you probably saw, you know, the uh, level of speed and fineness in its uh, carving and crafting, its carving and notching abilities. This thing definitely gets right down to the task very quickly. I did have to actually take off my big winter mittens because uh, I had to actually do some fine tasks with this tool. And I wanted to truly show off that uh, this blade is very good at fine work. Uh, so with mittens on, of course, it's a little bit hard to be fine because you have these big things on, but this blade is very capable of the fine tasks. So in addition to that, um, like I said, it does have some very custom touches. The tapered tang on this blade, as you guys can see there, does make it very, very comfortable to hold. Not only that, you guys can see that the overall profile of this handle is very nice, very comfortable. And, uh, you know, for the longest time, I thought Bark River, you know, my BRK Bushcrafter especially, was one of the most comfortable, ergonomically speaking, blades out there. But this knife definitely beats it. It kind of has a modified Coke bottle shape to it and like I said the tapered tang really gives the ability for your last two fingers your pinky and your ring finger to wrap around that blade handle and get a nice secure firm grip uh, in addition to that this one once again another kind of custom feature to these JBK layman's is they come in many different handle variations the one that uh, I got was vintage uh, linen micarta and with that, it is also stacked, as I'm sure you guys saw. It has some, I, what I believe to be paper micarta in there, you know, like the black and the uh, kind of yellowish, I believe, are paper. And then you have more linen micarta on the actual uh, next layer that's touching the tang of the blade. So definitely some very beautiful custom touches. It is polished nicely. Now, one thing about polished micarta, just like my BRK Bushcrafter, I have not undone the polish because I do like the way it looks but do bear in mind that with any polished micarta or any polished handle material it will be a little bit slick and you can see that this thing has no problem sliding in my hand so do bear that in mind now I will say 
it's not the worst. Uh, you know, you can certainly get traction, but uh, just bear in mind that it is a little slick. Now, going over to the blade, this blade is just under four inches long, and so you guys can see here that it is my preferred blade length, you know, to be just under four inches long, around 3.8, 3.7, this one I believe, if I remember correctly, is 3.7, uh, and some change, but in a really golden kind of blade length that allows you to do a lot in the field, but also not have a overly cumbersome knife that you have to deal with, you know, you don't have this long blade that you're wielding, uh, so it is a good blade length, and that blade material is made out of 8670, and 8670, this one is a special version that JBK has themselves, or kind of makes in-house. So this one, I believe, has a little bit of a different formula, but it overall makes the uh, 8670 a more well-rounded steel for general tasks. But even just as 8670, it is a very high performing tool steel. And uh, once again, easily up there in the class with things like CPM 3V K110. And obviously I wouldn't replace my BRK Bushcrafter with something that was inferior in materials as well. Uh, so this thing is superior in ergonomics, superior or at least equal in materials. And this blade has no problems holding an edge. And uh, overall 8670, from my experience, so this is my only blade in it, has performed very well. And it does have excellent edge retention as you'd expect. In addition to that though, uh, this is a convex ground 8670, so you guys could probably see. Now this one, unlike other convex ground blades that I have used in the past, this one does have a bevel to it. And the nice thing that I found, and I kind of have to explain in carving, is that when you have a bevel versus no bevel, like my Bark River Knives Aurora has uh, just a straight convex grind where the grind is the actual cutting edge, similar to how a Scandi grind would work. Um, when you have that kind of uh, just straight convex grind, it does make doing things like feather sticking a little bit harder because what ends up happening is the very material you're trying to catch with that very cutting edge just wants to slide and so you don't really bite or you have to kind of drop the blade at a higher angle or bring it to a higher angle so that you can catch. So it kind of makes it a little bit more challenging with a true convex grind to do things like feather sticking and that's why I kind of shy away from convex grinds. Aside from that point, they are excellent. However, the bevel on this uh, grind uh, or the bevel to complement this grind definitely helps with that kind of mitigating that point where you can have a nice light angle and still pick up the wood to feather stick it. So once again a good choice from JBK uh, and overall I have no complaints with the grind. Now the one thing I will say just as a warning, once again this isn't a complaint but it is a warning about convex grinds as a whole, all convex grinds. As we discussed you know the uh, tang of this blade was 530 seconds and it tapers out to be extremely thin uh, so you do want to keep in mind that because it tapers out so thin and once again because this is a convex so it just goes you know down the uh, tip stability or the tip strength of this blade is going to be uh, very light so you're not going to want to do a lot of prying you know you're not going to want to make things like netting needles with this knife uh, which once again that's why you know my Bark River Knives Bushcrafter and my 3DK MAK are other knives that I have in my rotation so whenever I anticipate having to do harder wearing tasks I will rotate to those knives and carry those but you do want to just be mindful if you are going to use this blade and like I said other knives like my uh, BRK Aurora uh, all of the convex ground blades are going to have very thin tips and very unsupported tips so they are going to be more prone to breaking snapping and stuff like that so do bear that in mind that's not necessarily Necessarily a fault in the blade manufacturing it's just the inherent design you know you can't have a super fine tip but also have a super hard wearing tip so you kind of have to choose do you want precision or do you want durability and so for me most of the time and in all honesty I think with most bushcrafters you know uh, durability is certainly nice but you know realistically that's the reason you carry a saw realistically that's why you carry a hatchet you know there's a reason why you carry multiple tools in your toolbox you know to 
solve those different issues. So even if some might say, you know, well, what if you have to do something more hardware and all you have is that little JBK layman? Well, that's why I have the hatchet, that's why I have the saw, and also usually I will be having or carrying, I can't really show it off here too much, but you know, I usually carry a secondary blade. So uh, I carry an auxiliary blade with me that is that usually stays on my pants. And so if I absolutely have to, if I'm pushed into it, I will be running another blade that uh, can facilitate those needs better. So down in the uh, description below will be JBK's uh, website where you guys can go and check out this blade for yourself. They are not cheap at all. Of course, you know, handmade blades and the materials that we previously discussed do cost extra. So do understand that you are getting into this blade for a little, a pretty penny. You know, this is around a $350, $400 knife, depending on all the options you go for. You know, it might be higher, it might be a little bit less, but around $300 to $400 is what you can expect to spend. But once again, you are getting really excellent performance and a blade that is something that you can take pride in owning and uh, really just a fantastic overall uh, blade. So anyways, that is the JBK Layman and hopefully you guys enjoyed this wintry review uh, covering this awesome blade and uh, why I like it. So anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.